Right, this is a great question. Brings in lots of different areas of maths into what is a differential equation. We're not asked to uh, put in any conditions to work out any constants. We're not given any context to this problem. Uh, we're just asked to solve it for these nine marks. Right, well, first up, let's we need to separate variables. Get the function of y on the left with dy by dx and set it equal to a function of x on the right because then we can integrate both sides with respect to x. We'll get to that in a, in a bit because there's, there's actually quite a lot more to do before we do that. So we can divide through by y, get 1 over y, dy by dx, and also divide through by this cubic function. Okay, we, we don't actually have a choice. We need to do that to get it in this form here. Now, it's worth immediately thinking, can we integrate 1 over y, which we can, but can we integrate this thing on the right, which at present we can't. It's not in the form, so let's cycle through it, it's not in the form f dash x over f of x, that's like a classic thing to look for when you've got a fraction, but nope. It doesn't really seem like a substitution is going to make life like easier. Um, yeah, and that's uh, it's not it's not going to be by parts or anything like that. Um, so, what needs to jump out at some point in your mind is right. This is a cubic function. Potentially, we could factorize it into three brackets, and then that is looking like partial fractions. That is the that's the thing you have to realize in this question to rewrite this in partial fractions. So first up, uh, we need to factorize the cubic. So I'm going to let f of x, this is a different f of x to the one I wrote there, it doesn't really matter, but f of x equal 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. But we're not told a factor or anything, we're going to have to find one to try and use it by using the factor theorem. So I'm going to just try some numbers. So f of 1 is always a, a good idea. Uh, all right, I can work this out without a calculator, but I can very quickly see this is no way going to equal 0. Could try f of minus 1 or f of 2 and so on. Actually, anything you try should divide into 6 because when you times your numbers together, they're going to give 6. So when I did it, I tried f of 2. We can put this in. So it's going to be 2 times 2 cubed, just replace all the x's by 2, basically. Okay, we get minus 12, so basically it's not 0. And when I did it, I decided to carry on and look at f of 3, keep, keep them positive. Okay, and we get zero. So that means by the factor theorem, x minus three is a factor. We can do a polynomial division. Okay, let's see what we get. So I'm not going to go through this in full detail. I'm going to assume that you're, you're, you recognize polynomial division. Divide, multiply back through. If you're not confident with it, then there are I've got videos. There are other videos where which show it in more detail what's going on. 3x squared, bring the 11x down. Then plus 3x. It's going to give minus 2x plus 6. So minus 2. And that all checks out. Okay, so what that means is f of x divided by x minus 3 is this quotient, which means f of x is x minus 3 times the quotient.
and you can bet this is going to factorize as well. We're doing partial fractions, so it's, it's surely going to be integers. If it's going to factorize, it's going to be 2x and x. I've only got to try 2 and 1, and the 2 goes here. That's going to give me plus 4x, and then minus 1 here gives me minus x. So add, I get this when I, I combine them, but I'm adding, and this one we're multiplying. Okay. So returning to here, taking a, a big step forward. So this thing is going to equal 20x minus 35 all over x minus 3. 2x minus 1, x plus 2. But before I integrate, I need to, this is where the partial fractions come in. We need to, we need to write the right-hand side in partial fractions. So we're going to let this thing on the right. be identical to a over x minus 3 because these things we can integrate but we need to find a, b and c first so multiply through by this denominator 20x minus 35 is identical to a times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2, because the x minus 3 cancels out. Plus b and It's pretty lengthy, so I'm going to have to go on to another line. Then, sorry, x minus 3. times 2x minus 1. Now because this is identical for all values of x, we can just try some values of x out to work out the constants. We do that by picking one of these x's here that will make some of the brackets 0. So let's start with x is equal to a half. We get 10 minus 35 minus 25 is equal the this term cancels and the bottom of the c term cancels, so we're just left with b. So I'm going to get b, it's going to be a half minus 3, that's minus 2 and a half, or minus 5 over 2. Of course, feel free to use your calculator here. And then a half plus 2 is positive 5 over 2. So this is minus 25 over 4b. And we can just look at that and see that b is going to have to equal 4 to cancel it, or you can you can divide through by 25, minus 25 maybe, I suppose. Uh, 1 is equal to b, so b is 4. Next up, let's go with x is minus 2. So I'm going to get minus 40, minus 35, minus 75. Equals, and I'm just left with the c term, so c times minus 5 times minus 5. That's going to give 25, so c is minus 75 over 25, c is minus 3. And finally, x equals 3. 60 minus 35 gives 25. And then I'm going to get my term in a. So I'm going to get 6 minus 1, so 5. And then another 5. A equals 1. Right, so we can take this thing here that is uh, in a lot better shape than that, the very starting equation, but we can get it even better. So 1 over y dy by dx is going to equal 
oh, I've lost it up here, haven't I? But 1 over x minus 3. And then for b, we had uh, b over 2x minus 1. So it's 4 over 2x minus 1. And finally, it was plus c over x plus 2. So it's going to be minus 3 over x plus 2, because c is minus 3. You can either add on minus, or you can just subtract it like that. Right, we're ready. We can now, int do you know what, I'm do this in a different color. We can integrate both sides with respect to x. Personally, I always prefer to do it like this. Some people will times through by dx and then put an integral sign around both. But I feel like this way explains a little bit more clearly why it works. So I'm going with that. Right, integrating 1 over y gives ln y. Okay, that's a that's a standard result that you need to know. And then same here, really. Ax plus b has got, a, do you know what, maybe I'll even um, write it down here. d by dx of ln Ax plus b is equal to, using the chain rule, a over Ax plus b, which means when it comes to integrating 1, over ax plus b, we get ln ax plus b, but we need to divide by a instead. So using these ideas here, a is just 1 and uh, b is minus 3, so we just get ln x minus 3, the modulus sign. This one's a bit trickier, I've got a 4 and a 2x minus 1, but I know I'm going to get ln 2x minus 1, and then actually I'm going to differentiate it back. I would get 2 over 2x minus 1, so I need to put a 2 there. There's, you know, there's other ways you can think about it, but yeah, the end result is going to be this. And then over here, I'm going to get minus 3 ln x plus 2. Don't forget we've got a plus c. Very important not to forget that. Remember, we're asked to work out y equals f of x, so we're not done yet. We need to get rid of these logs. And we can combine these logs. It's just before I do, I need to bring the powers up. And then I'm going to replace c by ln k so that I can absorb it into all the other lens. I'm going to write it as a logarithm. C equals ln k. And that means it's going to be ln with a big modular sign, then it's going to be x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 all squared. But then I'm dividing because I'm minusing the log. It's, uh, it's in the form ln a minus b, which is a over b inside the log. So x plus 2 cubed. And don't forget we've got the ln k, so I can just stick it there. Now if you have ln of something equals ln of something, you can just essentially ignore the luns. Or you can imagine raising both to the power of e, which cancels them out. And we're left with y equals, we can remove the modular signs now because there's any there's no restriction anymore. Uh, x can be negative, no problems. We don't have to make it a modulus to ensure that we can take the logarithm. So y equals k times x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 squared all over x plus 2 cubed. All right, quite a hefty question. Really good though. Well done.